All right, so there's not much more to introduce. This is part three of my chat with Zach. Hopefully you've got plenty out of part one and two. If you haven't watched them already, go check them out. Uh, really valuable stuff, especially part one, where we talk about going from beginner into intermediate triathlete. There's some really inf interesting insights in terms of how basic we kept things, but how big of a gain we got. And if you're interested in things like gastrointestinal upset, part two is definitely for you. Um, how we were able to resolve that was a big thing we focused on in year two working together. Um, wasn't necessarily getting any faster. Yes, that was a goal but trying to make sure his nutrition was on point. Now, if you listen to part one, he basically took no gels at all in his first ever 70.3, which is, and took no carbs, which is absolutely mind boggling. But trying to take him from that all the way up to being able to take in high amounts because he's working so hard, it was a bit of a challenge in the initial stages. So this wraps up our chat, where we're heading into now, um, breaking down and how to work through uh, a race result that maybe didn't go your way, take the emotion out of it. I actually talked about this on a video about a month or so ago that I put up on the channel. So go watch that one about my recommendations for, for taking the emotion out of your decision-making when it comes to post-race analysis, um, making sure we are we are finding the opportunities rather than just putting things um, aside or, or sort of being dis uh, disappointed or frustrated. Let's look at the opportunities, but take a moment to step back and really assess it in a really objective and I guess non-biased way. Uh, so without any further ado, let's jump into part three. Again, hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below, do you wanna see more videos like this where we go and I talk to the athletes I'm working with? Happy to make the content that works for you guys, but without any further ado, let's get into part three of my conversation with Zach. And I, like this, like since Melbourne at the start of the year, like we've gone through a few iterations of changing some things and like making some changes, but we're at a point now where we, we need to really continue to think about changing things. Yeah. Um, well, I think but take the emotion out of it, sit on it for a week, and we come back and we look at it a lot more objectively rather than just being like, that was a shit race, i got to change it. i got to reinvent the wheel here. It's like, we can sit back and go, oh, no, we actually did achieve a bit, but like, all right, what what specifically is it that we maybe didn't do enough of? Or what, what can we change in that next block? You look at it from a different perspective. Yeah, exactly. So I never like making decisions immediately after what's happened. you got to sit on it for at least a couple of days, if not a week. Like, let yourself recover and... Take take all the don't put, your, don't put your bike in the bin. Hundred percent, hundred percent. You got to look. You got to look at it from a perspective of like, yeah. If you look at it emotionally, like you you'll end up putting yourself in a in a bad position for your next your next event, which was a close turnaround. But then like for future preps, you like, like it just leads to more frustration. Yeah. Um. So I think this really highlights how important working with a coach is. Yeah. Um, and probably how lucky I was working with you at the time coach and physiologist so we sat down and chatted about the race and i mentioned a few key things that i think you picked up on number one was on the run at geelong feeling completely fine legs felt fine everything yeah. felt fine just couldn't go any faster yeah we just didn't have the speed there you're um, like i could hold this for as long as i wanted but we just couldn't go any I could, quicker i could have run forever i could have yeah. run i could have done um I could, you might as well have been Iron Man. I could have yeah. just kept going. I just wasn't going fast enough. Just coming back to our point before about you having the same pace across <laughs> all events. That's kind of our theory a little bit, but we, we might touch on that a bit later or another time. But. So there was just a few things that I had yeah. said or verbalized, just describing the feelings and what was happening that you picked up on. Um, and we were able to make some tweaks in the training. Like it was a super short turnaround. I mean, there wasn't yep. a lot of training, but you picked up on it pretty well. And just were able to kind of tweak the engine, I guess, um, between Geelong and Melbourne, um, change the training. And it was good at this point because I guess the first time we went through things, we had no idea. Like it's just, yep. you're throwing paint at a wall or you're throwing, like, yep. you, you, know, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, 100%. Um, so we had, so I guess the first time you get through it, you kind of, you don't know how someone's going to adapt and respond. Yep. And now this was kind of the second time we were going through. We used a similar, a similar um, plan, strategy, training program. Yep. But you know, at that point, it was. I think you started to pick up what was really working and what wasn't working so well. What I was responding to and what was just smashing me. Yeah. Um, yeah. What What was What was <laughs> inducing a stimulus for adaptation versus what was just. We were, just, we, were just, we were just going out and doing and <laughs> and not not going out and doing sessions, but it's like in on reflection, it's like what were the things that yeah we we're just burning you out, making it hard for us to get the adaptation because we weren't recovering appropriately from it. Um, what were some of the tweaks that we could make that all right, well, we need to find an extra couple of percent here? Because um, I mean, fundamentally, leading to that, we didn't like leading to that Geelong 
race. Like a lot of the principles we'd had previously used were still in in play. Yeah. Um, again, because of that sort of, I guess, from my perspective, it's a bit of that conservative approach of like, really, like we're three years in, like like not even at that point, we're still like two years into the sport. Like, at what point do the do the fundamental basic stuff stop working? Like we're still trying to find when that when that is. Like, are we still going to keep having that progression? Because we hadn't seen we hadn't seen a negative occur. Uh, and even at that point, it's like, you still went quicker. It's like, we still technically hadn't seen. It's like, at, at what point do we really have to be very, very strategic? And I think that's that's where we sort of hit that balance, isn't it? It's like, Absolutely. Right, we have to be we have to be really picky and pedantic here about like where we yep. put things in and how we do it because yep. like we're, we're clearly at more of an advanced stage. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, and, you know, I guess the first time through we kind of you fight it you just follow super like you just needs yep. to be super basic here there's no need for any kind of crazy yep. you know just oh, okay we'll do low intensity we'll be a bit polarized you know we'll hit mm. some vo2 max stuff and then we'll do low intensity stuff we'll just build your engine yep. um and then coming into racing we'll look at pushing these thresholds and then you know maybe we'll do some race specific work and then that second time through just it yep. was i was lucky that i had a coach looking at stuff yep. just to see what worked and comparing it back to the first time and it, yeah just super interesting um yeah. and then like i said able to make the tweaks and then turned around um at melbourne still i don't know not super stoked with the result yeah but i think that that one largely probably hurt a bit more because it was i mean we sort of were getting to a point here where you're going we're starting to race quick enough that we're, we're right at the top of the age group field like and, and we've we've obviously discussed like the possibilities of maybe being able to progress into a, a professional <laughs> sort of ranks um, at, at maybe some point in time we're starting to get close time-wise. But I think like when we talk about that goal before that you wrote four hours on the wall and we get to it, we do a 403 and the back end of that run, you sort of, you, you probably knew, you probably knew reasonably early in the run that it was, it was going to be tight to get to the four hour and you go, maybe like it's fading away. Like, did you feel that in the last no. couple of K or do you still feel it was on the cards? <sighs> Because I, I, uh, I, to be completely honest, my perspective, and there's there's video of this on my Instagram of you running through that finishing shoot, and you looked at you looked absolutely dejected. You just did not want to be there. Like that that was the look you gave me, not running through going, I'm going to finish sub four here. Happy days. Uh, like you, you looked like you had plenty of unfinished business coming through that finish shoot. Where okay, so that okay, so what happened? Um, I came off the bike. I just okay, the whole race. I guess yep. I swam. Um, I just try and like I'm not a great swimmer. I, mean, I learned to swim through COVID. Yep. Spent about twenty hours in the pool yep. over the last two yep. years. Which is which is so, yeah, hard hard to do when you can't. <laughs> you're not allowed to go to the pool to yeah. swim. Um, um, anyway, <laughs> so it's, for me, it's always just kind of um, just try and swim super efficient. And don't yep. Try and burn too much energy. So I came out of the swim and I was like, just get to your bike and try and make up some time on those yeah, guys do what up can. front. Um, so I like rode my little heart out. <laughs> got into T one. Um, like once again I got no idea what the time at the stage that I'm racing I got no yeah. idea what the times were and stuff um, but came out of T1 and I was absolutely flying um, but you know the problem was that I probably it was I, I remember it I actually raced in a new race suit and I probably hadn't done enough work in the race suit similar to race conditions yeah because for me i remember it being it feeling really warm and humid yeah um which is interesting because it was a it was compared to so you wore a different suit at geelong same brand suit it's just the newer version of it um which is sort of an interesting thing to then look at like in the future it's like technique on paper it doesn't sound like much of a change does it but it's like you actually experienced it being Hot. quite different and it might yeah changed a lot in terms of performance just because of that heat load um, exactly, but came off came off the bike into the run, um, and the first five k's. I remember looking down at my watch, just going, "Holy crap!" I think I was running three forty fives. Like I was absolutely flying. Yep. I'm like, "Far out, Zachy boy! All you need to do is just get to the turnaround yep. and just hold on to this pace. Like this is you. This is what you do. You don't slow down." Um, and no one is going to run faster in the back half of this marathon. This is just going to be a slog fest for everyone. Yep. Anyway, got down to the first turnaround and just, I remember feeling my legs just this heavy, like just, it was such a quick thing. Just felt like I was walking around with bags of concrete. 
yeah. um, it was <laughs> it was just the worst. Yeah. And it, it was from that point there, it probably wouldn't have mattered. Oh, there would have been a bit of consolation, I guess, if I went in the four hours. But yeah. um, knowing that I wasn't able to finish the race and do my best, yeah. what I, but, well, that, that I was capable of, um, you know, from that point, I was just so angry and yeah. knowing that I had to slow down probably because I hadn't fueled enough Yep. because it was like I felt a bit hotter so probably need to take I probably needed to take on a bit more fuel and a bit more hydration yeah um because like I mean just for just for context though so um we know in the heat high like generally speaking it like if you keep the same intensity hotter conditions oxygen assumption is going to go up things get harder for us we're, we're doing more with our blood flow because we're trying to cool ourselves down but Ultimately, it's going to mean we're probably going to burn through fuel a little bit quicker too. But what what was your fueling strategy overall? How many grams of carbs are you aiming to hit per hour? Just to give a bit of context to, to the situation. So, I think I was aiming for 90 on the bike. Yeah. But in hindsight, I probably needed to, to bump that Do up. Do a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's where like... Especially you, because of how hard I rode. Yeah. And that, that's where we look at, I mean, what's what's capable so we've gone from yeah initially we've sort of gone from not taking anything we over a couple of years we've built up to be able to take 90 grams per hour very comfortably no issues now we're starting to get to a point where we go we look at what the elite and professional guys are doing a lot of them are taking 110 120 potentially even getting close to 130 grams of carbs per hour definitely on the bike they're loading up excessively more I and because that, you are riding so much like heard, so hard i heard that the uh, someone not someone maybe the norwegian guys are 140 that doesn't surprise me because again we talk about that simple view of like if we want to work this hard it requires this much energy and if yeah, we have the energy available so like it, it's exactly like there is there is it's more it's more complex than that physiologically but it also doesn't necessarily have to be that complex no, because it's okay, just a process so of energy in energy that's, that's out exactly right. so so like as long as we are putting enough energy in to combat the decline in fuel stores like uh, to enough that we can prevent the fatigue factor. Like we're going to be okay, and, and we sort of look at that and go. In hindsight, you fuel up a bit more. Like you've absolute, you've done your, your fastest bike by a long way. Like that that average kilometers per hour is like forty plus. What, what's that? Was that coming out to be forty two? What did you hold? Forty two oh, something like that. Okay. It was forty plus k. Like definitely forty plus k an hour um, for ninety k's, and then you're trying to run off that. I mean, yeah, you're like you're going to be burned through a lot of fuel. So in hindsight, it's like, yeah, if we're able to take on a lot, a, a bit more fuel on the bike, does that help us? But it's still, it's your fourth half Ironman. Like a lot of guys, yeah. a, lot of guys yeah. a lot of guys your age who are sort of into long course racing have probably done eight, 10 potentially events. They might be doing two events a year for the last five years. Like there's 10 events already. Um, it was your fourth race. And we're still trying to put all of this together in terms of pacing, like what's, what's appropriate, what's right. Um, and, and like, you'll still continue to learn learn through that process it's like when you are then going and like if there's some other other quick guys on course like i remember that like that melbourne course we all sort of joked about the age group field being a bit of a draft fest like everyone stuck together i remember seeing you out in the bike though like you were by yourself that because we missed because we yeah. missed a bit of that front group in the swim it's like you're out there yeah. on your own so you didn't have any pacing to work off other people you couldn't maximize like draft zones obviously 12 meters you can't maximize sitting at 12.1 like all those little factors like you're doing yeah, like yeah, you didn't ever really. I remember for the most part when you came past like where I am down on Beach Road, it was like I, there was no one in front of you. Like, you actually couldn't see people in front of you in some parts of the course, which is a bit unusual. But it's also like you get a few, you're able to bridge that gap, get into a few situations where you can work off others. That helps you conserve a bit. Yep. But fundamentally, it's like if we fuel up as well, like it potentially wouldn't have mattered. Like we know a lot of guys struggled on the run anyway because um, of the day and the conditions and how quick everyone biked but fueling up that little bit extra I mean that's obviously something I'm assuming you're going to be definitely taking into this upcoming season is like we just got to try and get a bit more fuel in um, which again it's just relative to the fact that we're working harder than we ever have like yeah, yeah like you expend more energy you need yeah more energy. That's, like, that's exactly again, right we, we come back to it again and again it's such a simple <laughs> thought but you, it's like you want to sense. you want to sit on 250 watts or you want to sit on you know 300 yep. watts Hang on, do you really want to sit there? How much energy an hour? Like 270 yeah. is a thousand calories an hour. Even if you're best case scenario, 50 yeah. 50 carbs and fat, yeah. that's 500, that's 500 calories from fat, um, so from carbs, carbs. and 500 um, from fat. I mean, 
we're talking about that's 100 grams over 100 grams an hour 125 that's, grams that's, an hour yeah that's a that's a lot of fuel being expended um so you know yeah that's a lot yeah and, and not and like i mean not all of the stuff you put back in will actually be directly then converted into atp like some like like it, it, there's always going to be a loss somewhere like we, we were actually chatting before in terms of like the efficiency process it's like a lot of it's going to turn into heat like as a byproduct like we're actually going to lose a lot of that energy production as heat so like the fueling aspect again is super super critical and will continue to be more critical the faster and faster you get um which i guess if we sort of then start to think about rounding this out like really realistically if we look at the the process that we've gone through initially we talked about like basic programming like we start to get into a bit more sort of formalized coaching like realistically now you're sort of at a point where you you can like we actually had this conversation a few weeks ago where you can like you can basically do the programming stuff <laughs> yourself like you know enough now that it's like i don't need to be the one who needs to ride in oh zach you gotta you gotta swim and bike and these sessions is that like the my the minute detail stuff is more where i'm coming in and just helping oversee some stuff now because you're definitely at that point where it's like you know enough about how to structure your week best for you, fit it in around work, um, be able to get the maximal out of it. Like, I don't need to put the basic stuff in there for you anymore. I now sort of serve as that sort of, again, like just checking to make sure we're, we're ticking the boxes that we need to. Um, which, again, it's the type of thing, it's like that. that's what we've always sort of worked off here in, in terms of our philosophy of, if we think that's appropriate for you, like we just want to be able to do the best that's going to fit in with what you need. Um, do I, do I need to be be there telling you telling you what session to do every single day? Like, you know enough now that you're, you're beyond that point. But do we, like, is it useful ha- like being here and us sitting down and having a solid conversation around what's going on, working things out, having an additional perspective? Like, that's the part that's going to be really useful for us now is that extra set of eyes. Um, yep. Of which, yeah, we've brought more sets of eyes in. It's like, you've got myself, you've got a team here, but we go see the guys at Monash. We like we link up with what some of the, the local guys who are racing on the pro scene are doing, try and get some of their insights. Like we're going to try and work off a little bit more of that over the last little while. We start really diving into the bike uh, a little bit more. So going and seeing Ken at Adaptive HP, like getting you dialed in position wise. You've chatting about before. You've got a new bike, which is always exciting. I mean, um, mate, that like, was that was just I think between Geelong and Melbourne. I mean, that was one of the people who I went and saw yeah. who really helped me. Um, yeah, like tire choice pressures even um, just like subtle aerodynamic changes yeah yeah the position i was in um yeah makes a huge difference it's massive yeah it's huge but like and all of this stuff that we're now talking about is like they're they're fun they're fundamental components of what makes up a really good endurance performance but in terms of the percentage improvement you're going to get like your tire choice is is a very minute percentage improvement like your tire choice isn't going to give you a 30 minute pb Ooh, maybe. maybe you reckon you reckon you're gonna go and do like a oh, sub two hour if you got a good tire and you got a um... it's gonna give you a bit of improvement when we're talking like the difference between you going 403 and four minute four hour at, at melbourne total time if you just looked at a tire change there probably gives you a bit of time but it's not the type of thing that's going to make you go 345 no no way. you know you know what i mean so like we're, we're now starting to look at like small little tweaks that will give us a bit of change but we're not looking at things that are going to drop us that 30 minutes or that 40 minutes anymore. And we like, it's just not physiologically possible to drop that amount of time necessarily as, as big chunks. Um, but when we compound some of that, so you compound your tire choice versus, all right, let's look at, is this suit the most appropriate for us to wear? Is it the most aero? Is it going to keep us cool? Is this helmet choice the best for us? Is this position perfectly optimized or are we a bit more flexible now so we can get into a further optimized position? you add those up together and now we get our chunks of time being eliminated like that's where we start to drop the three four five minutes again um which is again all coming from these like extra little optimization tweak rather than looking at the basic stuff we did uh, at the beginning so if we sort of maybe round this out because we sort of rambled on a little bit like this is a bit of a, a, a massive overview um of the entire process where where are we at right now what are we looking forward to next little while uh, like we said before, we, we're not we're not locked into uh, we, we're not racing this way. It was a bit unfortunate because we probably feel not, ready to race, but not swimming down Beach Road. Yeah, yeah, pretty. Uh, well, you're not going to be probably not going to be swimming at all, really. Um, <laughs> what's the next race you've got in mind uh, in terms of major race seventy point three, um, and how are we sort of feeling for this? I guess upcoming season of racing because it's still going to be what a couple of months until we realistically have another chance to race, given we're not racing this weekend. Where are we at now? What are we? How are we feeling leading to this season? Um, and we'll probably sort of round it out there because I think that gives us 
pretty good view of your transition over the, the couple of years. Maybe even throw in there like sort of future goals. Like what are we looking at, not just for this summer, but like maybe even the next 12 months, like where do we see ourselves? I just want to go fast, man. I just want to go fast. <laughs> um, I don't know. Next race is going to be Tassie. Yep, Hobart, 70.3. Hobart, 70.3. Yep. Um, and then more than likely probably just back up straight into Geelong. Yep. Um, which will be a good one again because I mean it's fourth year in a row con- again consistent course we can see where we're at as a benchmark but <laughs> as much as I yeah. love suffering <laughs> along that waterfront um, and then like I said it's just been awesome um, being able to work on with you and now <laughs> having two years of training data to look back on to make the tweaks that we needed to tweak to know what was working and what didn't work. Going into year three, yep. Um, you know, the after Melbourne, I was kind of like, maybe I'm done, maybe this is as fit as I'll ever get, rock and roll, Zappy boy. Um, you sell all your crap and go back to being a normal <laughs> human being. Get back on the beers. Don't be a crazy man. You did actually say that. Uh, what, what you actually said that when you didn't get your race entries from Melbourne, which yeah, was not that long it. ago, it was a long were, off season. You were, you were almost prepared to bin it for a while, and I was like, "Mate, come on! There's plenty of stuff we can find, and you'll be right. Like, it's not that long. We're November already. Give it another what three months, and we'll be, we'll be at Hobart. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's not gonna be that long. But um, yeah, like, uh, you know, maybe I thought that was as fit as I could get, but making the tweaks that we've yep. made more recently, yeah. Um, you know, I just I. I, I couldn't do the things that I'm doing now last year, which yep. is interesting. Um, yep. So hopefully, hopefully, I mean, hopefully I can swim and not be a sphincter. Yep. Um, that, like, <laughs> what, that, that's what, just a, a, what a description of your swimming ability. Uh, that's a, that's uh, definitely something that like in terms of opportunities we, we've said for a while, but like it's going to become increasingly relevant for you to get much better in the water isn't it it's yeah, like it's just, that, that's a big chunk of time we could be dropping it's just time in the water and yep. just more and more swimming um work on technique i think i went and saw breton from effortless swimming yep um and breton just looked at me and said dude we got a bit of work to do he said you got a bit of work to do <laughs> but he said you know he said don't go to the pool and just smash yourself he's like yep. it's not about fitness it's, it's about skill, it's about skill acquisition yep um He's like, I just want you to just go and work at your technique, yep. um, you know. And then once you once you start swimming properly, then yep. then we'll do a bit more. Anyway, um, so hopefully I can work a bit on my swim. Um, my bike's getting to a, a great place where it's I can ride and put in enough power, and it's not taxing me. Um, yep. I'm not smoking through glycogen stores like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Um, which hopefully is going to, you know, set me up for a, a better run and um, going harder for longer to the back end of back end of that half marathon. Yeah. Um, See what happens then on the next day, hey, isn't it? Like, but, well, I mean, it's one of those things as well, like, because it's going to be important we have a strong bike at Hobart. It's just like, you look at the profile of it, it's just like up and down, up and down, up and down. It's not a dead flat course at all. Like, it's a, yeah, a bit undulating. So strong bike there is going to be important. Um but, I mean, like you said, it's just like we just, we're, we're in, like, the positive thing is, like, you're in a, comparative to, pre, like, last year, it's like we're in a position where we feel like we're a lot better, which is always exciting to sort of go, all right, how's that going to translate? That's probably, like, a little bit of frustration at the moment, isn't it? It's just like we wish we had a race in December that we could go and maybe have a crack at. <laughs> um, a- anything longer term, that, like, longer term than that, where we sort of out, like, last little thing of, we've sort of touched on that point of, We've always sort of felt maybe your your intensity is a bit similar across a lot of different different race distances. The obvious question then is thoughts on full distance. We have discussed it, but like I guess that's probably what a, a lot of people are thinking is like, oh, you've clearly done quite well as an age grouper, and a lot of these times are like pretty impressive. Like, have you thought about doing an Ironman? Does it appeal to you? Do you want to have a crack at it eventually? Do you think you're suited to it? I think we probably are. <laughs> we probably are well suited to really long distance stuff. Like you're like, it sort of seems to be a bit that way. It's sort of a feel thing for me, but like, do you have any interest in that? Or is it more of a case of like, we want to go really well and, and how close can we get to maybe getting a little bit of a look at a pro license? Like what's, <laughs> what's more, what's more of a relevant conversation for you or is it, or is it just, you just want to keep getting better? Like, is that, is that majorly the, a bit of the driver or is it combination or, I just, want to go, I just want to go as fast as I can. I just want to go fast. He said that a few go. times. Yeah. Um, it, 
you know, for me, it's probably just more about, you know, what is my potential and can I get there and yeah. where does it stop and how far can you, how far can I push my body and um, what can I achieve? Yeah. Um, but in terms of Ironman and the full distance, it has to be part of you that wants to have a crack, isn't it? It's definitely on the cards. Yeah. Um, especially seeing how my body's reacted to the last block of training. Um, Which has been pretty solid volume, hasn't it? It's like you've been getting out there with some salt, like big sessions. Yeah. Like a lot of, like pro- probably the type of thing that if you're going really full into Ironman, probably want a little bit, probably a touch more volume than that. Yeah. Like specifically, but like comparative to before, you're handling a lot of volume a lot better than you have previously. So that's probably the part that maybe says, yeah, you at some point, like you might handle it okay. But, oh, see how you go. See how you go. Maybe. Uh, I've put it this way. I haven't, <laughs> I, I haven't booked any races like, yet, but I've been looking pretty you've hard. You've been looking? Yep. Well, we've still got, we've still got plenty of time. We've still got plenty of time. Let's get, we'll get through these 70.3s first and we'll, and we'll see, but... I mean, as a, as a bit of a summary, like a lot, a lot has been achieved in sort of realistically like two and a half to three years, hasn't it? It's like Absolutely. from where you've come from, yeah. like hopefully this has given a bit of an insight into that process. Like by no means have we been extensive here in terms of talking about the absolute ins and outs. It's been like, cover, we try to cover a lot of ground and maybe we'll go back and do a couple of extra follow-ups of get really into some, like what it's training actually looked like. And those who might be interested can, can sort of let us know um, if you want to see that sort of stuff, because like we've, we've definitely left a few things out, not by any reason other than we just got on tangents a few times here about various different topics that have come up. But I think it's sort of interesting to look back and reflect on the transition because it's a pretty impressive one. Like realistically, you look from the outside and go, in the space of a couple of years to go from five hour to four hour basically, to drop an hour off your time uh, in a 70.3 in a short space of time as a non-triathlete, non-swimmer coming into it, like pretty impressive so like i said before all credit all credit to you doing the work because i just get the easy job of telling you telling you what stuff i think we should do you have to go out and actually do the work do the training um so pretty impressive so i appreciate you sharing it with everyone uh in terms of that process and yeah looking forward to an exciting race season uh coming up in the next little bit absolutely 100 <laughs> percent